Nothing in particular here, just grabbing a random selection. Hola. Buenas tardes. ¿Qué tal? Oh, yep, that's probably true. There. All right. Record. All right. Yes, I am recovered from Nova Open, who is very good. I hope everyone else had a good good time too. I think I did nothing but sleep like the last two days and answer messages. But feeling better now, ready to get back to it. Do a little painting on this lady. Good evening, Gary. Uh, this is actually gray primer, not white. Um, I leave in October. Halfway through October. If you guys have any specific questions about Nova, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, how did you all feel about it? Drips by James. Thanks for the raid. Hello. Hey, 
Thanks, James. Appreciate that. We were just kind of getting into it. I'm glad people enjoyed their trip. And want to come back next year. I hope to make it the premier miniature painting event of uh, in the U.S. Hi, Lady Kichara. Maybe for you. It was a pretty long week for me. For those that don't know, uh, Kristoff Kabalchek um, taught the pre-convention two-day workshop and his flight got canceled in Warsaw so he did not show up until the evening of the first day so I covered most of the first day most of the first day of his workshop for him so I was pretty, uh, and that was on Tuesday, so we arrived Monday night. So, it was a pretty long week for me. No, we certainly did not, Christian. Uh, definitely had some late nights, probably too late. That's all right. That's what conventions are for.
Oh, I know my limits. I don't, I don't go that hard. Look, man, I'm a I'm an experienced drinker, which is why I don't drink much anymore. You caught me on a special occasion. That and any time I get in a room with Steve Garcia. Yeah, we don't need to go spreading that video around. I mean, it's fine. G21MM, hello, welcome. How was your stream? What were you, uh, what were you drawing? Doing a little... A sexy lady, I'm sure. from the other stream. Uh, yes, I am a miniature painter. I do... This is my full-time job. Right now I'm just blocking in some color, establishing some light and shadow. Nice. I have to say I quite like the new, the new design of uh, Laura Croft. All right, 
grab some alizarin crimson and just throw some color into the the cheeks around the nose a little bit just trying to establish some of this more flush tones Chill hype man. <laughs> yeah, I think we're talking about different cheeks here. Watched her stream. But for real, if you guys don't know, G21MM, check him out on uh, on Instagram. Feel free to post your Instagram. He's very good. Uh, the blue just cools off the, just cools it off a little bit. So like on this side here, I can take some of the crimson in this dark tone, right? And I mix it a little bit. Uh, oops, palette sliding upwards, right? So if I want to desaturate a little to do the shadow sides, that grays it out just a touch. And then I can come in and adjust the light a little bit without adding too much warmth to it. Right, because I've got a warm side and a cool side. in this warm tone, just a touch of the blue. I'm gonna place my my specular highlights. All right, I'm I've got the light coming slightly more in from this side. Okay. So the the brightest light's not gonna be in the center of her forehead. It's gonna be a little more over here. Right. I see this a lot where, right, so you've got the transition on the nose here, okay, 
see a lot of people shadow this, but if you think about the directionality of the light, right, if I turn my head slightly, right, this is not, okay, look, the side of my nose right here is in light. You see people, and I saw this a lot over the weekend, is people overshadowing this transition, right, right here. Okay, if the light's coming in from this direction, this this curve of the nose is actually a bit more in light, and then this side of the nose will be darker. And get some light on the cheek. Death, Death Cron X, Stretsky, uh, G the Lion. Thanks for following. Hello, everyone. Another one right here, and we kind of miniature painters. I see well any painters really will often uh, illustrators whatever will like overdo this shape right here, right this nasal fold. Um, on female faces, especially young females, if we want to make them, we want this. To be a little more subtle. Um, right, so I'll define it with light, but I don't want to overdo it with the shadows, and I don't want her to look like an old lady. If you do, if you overdo that, those wrinkles makes them look will make her look old. So try and keep it kind of subtle. And then you get a little bit of that fold, that rounded shape as it near the nose. But then as it come, gets further away, it kind of softens out towards the side of the mouth. Well, this is why I call this blocking in, right? Uh, we're just blocking in the shapes. And the same, it's the same principles apply to illustration as they do to, you know, miniature painting because essentially we're just illustrating on a three-dimensional canvas, right? So you, you have to understand the volumes of the face. You have to understand the, the direction of the light. And then... Um, the controlling your values is really important. Right? You need to have contrast on the face, right? Everything needs to have contrast to create definition, but you don't want to over contrast things. Right? The the total the the totality of the figure needs to have contrast, but not every single individual plane needs to have maximum contrast. Right here, you've got this little bit of the side of the lip. And then on this side, right, so you've got the mouth shape here, right, the upper lip. Well, on the shadow side, this, this wrinkle was going to be almost just go away, right? And what might actually happen is instead you get a little bit of bounce light 
right here on the underside of this shape. That kind of defines the shape, and this is, I'm sort of exaggerating it right here. When I come back in and soften that shape, It'll help create those, uh, that plane of, you know, the definition between the two, the two planes. I doom blick. Okay, so I just come in, get the shape in, then soften it a bit, and it's, I just want enough to to separate those. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of the blue mixed with the ivory. Get a really light tone, right? Almost white. The color isn't as important as the value here. Right, just pushing, pushing the value up a little bit. When you get into these like really bright colors, I mean, you're almost at white at this point. You know, you could think of the like the specular reflection is, is a bit of the sky. So it would have that small amount of blue in it. So this sort of, um, I got a little more to do over here, and I think I need a little bit darker color. Let's just grab, um, yeah, I'm gonna brown, brown, brown tone. I'll get to the back. Uh, I always paint the back. Yeah, that's in a class. That's different.
Okay, so this side of the face, right? Just think about the lights coming this direction. This form shadow you get on this cheek. Okay. Kind of starts here. So you're not going to get a whole lot of light on the face on this side. Probably get a little light right here. Painting the back is no joke, Sean. I'm not going to joke about it anymore. I don't want to be a negative influence on people, all right? Paint the backs of your models. Don't be the Instagram painter. It's an epidemic and it must be stopped. All right, so, so we can take some of this mid-tone, we'll add a little more blue to it because the light is going to come hit her armor, it's going to bounce up, it's going to affect the uh, color of the skin near her jawline. You might think that this will make her have like a kind of five o'clock shadow, but that is not the case, okay. As long as it is subtle, it won't appear that way. Uh, so when I'm sketching like this, the paint is like not really diluted at all. Okay, so now you can see that this is way too harsh, right? I like the red, so I'm going to grab some of the red, a little crimson. I want her cheeks to be a bit more saturated, but not quite this in shadow. So I need to bring this value up.
soften that transition a little bit. So I control all of my thinning, how much I want the paint to be thin, purely by how much water I leave on the brush. So I have a little paper towel, blue shop towels, because they're low lint. So if, after I rinse the brush, which you guys don't see, I use the towel to pull some water off of it. A lot of times I'll wipe it on my thumb to see how much water is in the brush and then I mix and kind of test, right? So, as I start to soften some of these areas, I can begin to dilute the paint a little more. And then I can start working in, in smaller brush strokes to uh, blend some of these transitions a little better. All right, so up here, paint's a little more diluted. Hi, Waxy Sandwich. How are you? Okay, get a little light on that cheek. Not too much. I don't want it to be as bright as the other side. Hello, Vince. Uh, as far as I know, the only way to get this model is to be in one of Tebow's classes or to have him gift you one. So apparently bribes do work. I'm kidding. They don't work. Don't try and bribe me. Oh, 
he did was give me extra work to do. Okay, so well, let me fix let me fix this part real quick. I'm gonna grab a little of that guy, a little bit of the red. And if I want to make a bigger adjustment, now I can make a kind of a glaze look on my thumb. See? See how thin that is? So I can make a larger color filter. Right. So I'm uh, pretty happy with kind of where that is at the moment, but what I need to do now is like this is working as a sketch, but without the other context. 
I can't quite um, finish the face without some more of these areas kind of blocked in because that's going to uh, affect my perception of the rest of the painting, right? So, fall on our face. Uh, let's go with like a. Honor Forest Bray. Hello. Thanks for following. So many new followers. Okay. Let's just go with the brown. Take a little bit of the crimson. Doesn't affect the color much, but it does give a little bit of more reddish tone to this brown. What would be the best, it's just small dots, small dots, man. So, um, I'm not going to do it on her right now, but if you wanted to do freckles, you do like small little dots and then you, if they're too, uh, too intense, you might have to glaze back over them with a skin tone to try and kind of tie them back in. But I would look at reference, right? So that you can get sort of an idea of placement and, and density of, of the freckles and everything. Okay, something like that just helps. Uh, I wouldn't try to do it with the airbrush. It's that I don't feel like I have enough control with the airbrush to do it that way. Um, some people might have the, the control to do that, but I do not.
All right. So, there, got some brown. Um, she would probably have a very slight amount of hair here. I'll, I mean, I'm probably going to end up painting back over that, but she, even just a little bit. Just kind of mark it out. How do I get the right size? I mean, you just, just it's a little tiny, man. You got to get a brush with a good point. Beep, 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 beep. Hi, Dub Rock. Okay. I'm going to grab a little more red and a bit of the brown. And alizarin crimson is pretty transparent, so you'll see this doesn't affect the lips very much. Where flat brown is very uh, opaque. So I kind of just draw the shape of the lips. Now the lower lip does not uh, go all the way to the corner of the mouth. Unlike the, the top lip. So I kind of draw that in. All right, now I need to think of a color for here, um, for her cloak and robe. We're working with a lot of red, so an easy choice would be to use like a like a green, or we could go even like further into the red. Uh, we're also going to have a lot of like blue in here. Mm, I think I want to do red. Green? I don't know. Here you guys you guys say. Which one? Green or red? I'll let chat decide whichever whichever gets more common. Green's in the lead. Green, 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 green. Okay, green. Okay, green. We're talking green. This is green. Unless you want like forest green. Unless you guys want like that. Which I can do. We 
can do that too. Making her look a little bit more like a ranger. And this is all underneath. She's got a shield that goes on her back, so. I would say this is like the only bad part of this figure. Might try and exaggerate some of the folds a little bit. Isakovich paintwork. Hello. Okay, something like that. I can use the skin tone. Because it's got a bit of yellow in it. To lighten this up. So, uh, this stuff, this is not super important because this is uh, going to be metallic. So, roughly, this sort of makes sense and doesn't really bother me. Uh, I probably want to figure out what how I want to do the, the sleeves. Um, I don't really want to do them green, so maybe a more neutral color might work. As to not pull attention away. I can mix a bit of the brown and the green together. And I end up with a kind of nasty color like that. I grab a little bit of the blue and you can see it starts to 
just gray out and we end up with a kind of khaki whatever color All right so very neutral kind of foresty tone See, I could have grabbed a new color for that, but instead I can just mix some of the colors on my palette to create a new tone that shares uh, colors with the other colors on the figure and creates color harmony Right, it's just putting a base coat down just to get an idea. So the other hand is this. It's not primed yet, but she's holding a sword like that. I left it off because I want to paint the reflection of the sword, a reflection of her arm and the sword in the breastplate, so. It is left off for now. Oh, uh, well now I'm thinking probably a lot more green. Well, there'll probably be blues and then a little bit of yellows for warmth, but then probably some greens and stuff since I'm now thinking she's like a like a ranger, right? So all this green gives me this kind of ranger vibe, so she'll probably have some browns and different tones like that in her in her armor. Okay, so Light comes in, boop, hits this here, right? It's going to come up and cat catibri? I don't know what that is. What's that? Right, so we're going to take some of this green that we've got. We're going to mix it with some of our shadow skin tone and look what happens. Right. I don't want to create an actual green, but see see what it does to the skin tone here. Maybe just a touch more. Maybe a little bit of this guy. It's almost the same color as that, right? Ah, I'm not super familiar with the the Dritzed books. Okay. And then under here, under her jaw, right, we can touch more of the, the dark green.
right? It's not a lot, but it looks green. But if I were to show you on my thumb, right, it looks green in context. But on the palette, it doesn't look green. Okay, so that's the important thing to realize is the perception of colors changed based on the context. Okay, and then we'll grab some of this pink mixed with the red. So just by kind of skipping some of the mid-tone, right, some of this, or the shadow tone, and just mixing the mid-tone with the red. And create some of the the color for the lips. Okay, give her some eyebrows just to, you know, finish marking out her facial features. Even if I go back over it, that's fine. Right, they might not be perfect. But I can make adjustments.
Okay, so right here. I need to shadow this just very subtly. As you have this shape, right? Notice it's not as dark as this, right? This is dark here. This is just a subtle, a subtle shadow. We can use some of that green. Greenish. It's not actually green. to create some, some nuance. All right. Okay. Now is when I can start making much more uh, subtle adjustments. Okay, start to get some of these like small, really small, like micro volumes, like her brow here. Another thing I don't want to overemphasize, but it's there. Right, so I keep it 
soft. Get that highlight on the upper lip. Don't do this too much, right? It's a subtle difference. Everything, everything about female faces is about subtlety. Uh, yeah, I do. He's downstairs, though. I'll skr... Okay. Um... Alright. So, the same thing I did for the eyes. Or the, the lips. Well, the back of him, you can't see because the backdrop, but when I go downstairs, I can grab him if you want to see him. And I think you can see more views of him on the uh, Hera website. Okay, so I'm going to use some of this pink to line the bottom of the eyelid. Do I ever use magnifiers? Yes. And you'll probably see that when I go to do... Uh, I just use reading glasses. I don't have, like, the crazy things. Whatever those are called. I just, I just use reading glasses. They work fine for me. Alright. So, eyeballs. Real quick. Okay. A little bit of... A little more blue. Alright, I'm trying to make a quite neutral gray here. 
Do not paint your eyeballs pure white. I know I've said this a million times, but we've got some new viewers. Don't paint the eyeballs pure white. You notice mine? They're not pure white. Even that's probably, I'm looking at it now, it's probably too light. I can always add brightness to it. Okay, so a little bit of that skin tone shows up in around the edge of the eyeball. I don't want a very get a little more water. I don't want a super dark line on the bottom. Okay, so like on this one, I can come back in with a more skin tone. Get that line underneath. Now the top the top side I can get a nice shadow. But I'll put that in later. Yeah, I think mine are like a 2x. They definitely magnify. They're also disgusting at the moment. Right. I think they're probably like 1.5. 1.5, maybe 2. Right now I can add a touch more ivory, but I'm still not going to white. Make sure I'm on camera. And I can adjust the size. Okay, start to get some of that roundness to the eye. And then one more little layer. Which will probably get covered up mostly by the iris, but continue to just give a little more shape to the eye. Okay, something like that. Let's zoom out. She looks so desaturated on on the uh, stream camera. 
she look really desaturated to you guys? Weird. I wonder what happened. Uh, da, 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 da. Did they like get rid of my settings? My saturation is turned way down. How's that? Is that better? Mm, that might be too much. Because that doesn't look very red to me. That's Cartachi red. Where's... Orange? Orange? Well, that looks okay. Right, maybe maybe a little too much. Turn that down a little bit. What is this deal? Ah! Okay, that feels better. That looks about right. It's like she was so desaturated. Even that looks maybe a little bright, but... Okay, uh, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to take a quick break. Stretch my legs. Do, do the thing that's bad for you. And we will continue. I will be back in five. Hello, hello. People, the people they want to see Oscar from the side. Come out. Okay, so here's Oscar. Guys, uh, see this, blah, 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 the rim light, right? 
So, you can't just paint. So, like, on the Marvel chibis, the way we do it is we just paint the line, right? We just paint a thin line that goes around the rim. And it works fine from two views. It works from the front, and it works from the back. Where it's like you line it up perfect, and you get that that blue that blue line. Well, when you're doing it on a display model that's going to be seen in 360, right? He's a little easier because he's got a uh, a backdrop, so they won't see it like from directly behind. But you can see, like, right, the line, it still works. It still works. It still works. Still works. So, right, like here, look, starts to look a little weird, right? But this is an unusual angle to look at the figure from. Right, and then from the back, you can see like the whole back of the model is lit with this orange, with this orange glow. Okay. So, it's uh, you can't just paint like you can't just paint like a a line that goes around the outside. That doesn't really make sense. The Mm, the light has to like cover the back right you can see like from the top now see the the fur is a little complicated because the fur the reason you get a rim this strong rim light on the fur is the fur is it's actually like passing through the fur and where it's you know you've got little little things like this think of hair let me grab, let me grab, um, here's a flashlight. I keep a flashlight handy. Okay. So what happens with hair, I'm gonna switch cameras, right? Okay. The light, the light starts to, the hair is like slightly translucent, exactly, subsurface scattering. So it catches on like the little thin parts of the hair and you can see, you can see that rim light start to catch on the edge there as it, as it goes through the hair and bounces around where it's more thin, right? And you get that halo effect. The same happens if I go like this, right? Which there's a lot of light here, so maybe if I go like this, what happens? Uh, right? Right, you start to get the like light sneaking through Okay, if I go like this, right, this, this rim light that happens. Now, it's much more exaggerated on something that's thinner, right? So if I do it to like a, the paper towel, right, where it's thinnest, you get way more rim light than you do otherwise. <clears throat> so... The idea here is that as the uh, as the hair gets like more because this is a hard plastic surface, okay. This is a hard plastic surface. You you're not going to get those little like wisps of hair that this light can get in and scatter around inside there. So you have to paint this lighter to make it look like it's scattering inside it. So you can get end up with this kind of thing here. Now I could paint this all brighter, but honestly, like, it's not super necessary because really the angle to look at this figure is from like 
here, right? This is a kind of weird angle to look at this figure from because of the backdrop. But if I didn't have the backdrop, yeah, I probably would have highlighted all this a lot more. Cool? Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to everybody. So when painting rim lights, you need to you need to actually like paint the back as if it's lit by the thing that's creating the rim light. Yes, there is a Terminator. But it's not like super dark, right? The Terminator is not like extremely dark. Okay, it's a mid-tone. This is a mid-tone here. This is a mid-tone. Terminator just being that it's darker than the two, the two sides, right? Your Terminator doesn't have, because this Terminator, right, is not as dark as these shadows. Because the top of his head is still lit, but it's just lit from two sides. Yes? Cool? Makes sense? Great. Fantastico. Paint some eyes. From a compositional standpoint, do you choose to add the backdrop to help control the viewing angles for a project like this, or is it just a preference thing, and do you feel the piece? Well, the reason I have the backdrop is because the figure came with it. Um... Now, when choosing your own figure, if you want to use a backdrop, yes, the reasons to include one would be to either further the setting or control the compositional angles. There's a few reasons. To further the atmosphere of the piece. All right, so this left here, left eye is not big enough. I get those the same, roughly the same size.
Oui. Non. Uh, this brush is probably too big for this. Beep, beep, beep. Even though it's got a nice point, it's a little too too much water. Go with this guy. Oh, my bad. Let me see. There you go. Um, do I use reference? Yes, I use reference. Right now I'm not. Okay, so I'm going to paint a little U shape. Okay, this little U shape in the, the bottom of the eye. Okay, right, I'm gonna grab some of this guy, some of the green. To make it a bit more intense, warm green. All right, test on my thumb. I want that one in the lower corner away from where the light's coming from. Yes. Okay. 
I'm going to grab a mix of the blue and the sunny skin tone. Kind of create my own greenish tone here as like the final light. Hey, our clothing is green. Wait, are you planning to put some of the green of her clothing? Ta-da! Okay, it's a little too much. Let's tone it back just a little bit. There we go. Just a little touch in the corner. Okay, give the little glisten. Alright. Now. Now. Some black. Take a little black, a little bit of the red. Okay, make sure it's dotting well, right? Pop, 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 pop. Good. Yes. Yes. Hello. See guys, if you want to paint faster, just don't screw up. Easy.
Mm -hmm. Might take a couple attempts. Yeah, I don't see what the problem is. All right, so now we can start to make some small adjustments around the eyes. Okay, we don't want this lower eyelid too dark. But it's fine on the far side. But we don't want her to have bags under her eyes. Okay, then we come back to the shadow. We blend those two together. Yeah, did you ever try just like nailing it, you know? It's way easier. All right, so now we can start to make all these small little tiny adjustments, right? Round, round off some of these surfaces, start to smooth things out. And she'll look so beautiful.
Just paint good. Get good. But in all seriousness, it just, this just comes with practice and patience, right? I know that's not what everyone wants to hear. But... That's really the only trick to getting better and faster. This piece is just for fun. Even though I've already had some people message me trying to buy it. <laughs> Okay, give her some of her eyelashes. So if you guys don't know, this is actually done by the same, uh, I what is her name? Um, it's very Slavic, so I'm not going to remember, but she is the same sculptor who did Shiv for Neko Galaxy. Okay, get the eyelashes in. It is a 3D sculpt. It's a 3D sculpt and then printed. All right, here's another one I like to do. See this little shape right here? See this thing where I put this little mark before, this little line, this little highlight? Check this out. You come in here, come in here, and you connect it. Real subtle, real tiny. Ta-da! Don't tell anyone about that.
That's our little secret. I mean, I definitely pick up on them. Yeah, you wanted hacks, you got a hack. There you go. Let's see if we can do this one too. You ready for another one? This one's harder. Okay, we're gonna get some real light pink. This, too dark, lighter. People hate this one because it's hard. And that's fair. Alright, we're gonna come in here. Boom. Little boom. That one's misplaced. So we're gonna tone that one back. No, not quite as bright. Uh, it can be pretty damn bright though. Because a lot of times that's what you're seeing. You're seeing another specular highlight in the tear duct. She's so pretty. She's so... Isn't she lovely? See this bottom lip? Connect this. Bam.
All right, I'm gonna give her a little dimple, just a tiny bit of dimpling. Come in here, right, right at the corner of the mouth. Just put a little dot shadow, right? Just a subtle. All right, we can change the sculpt a little bit. You wanted hacks, I got hacks for you. Now the real thing is you got to have the brush control to do that. I know. I'm sorry. No, I didn't actually. Okay, I like to leave just like a little gap right here between the up between the two uh I guess they're like lobes, right? Waxy's catching on. All right, now let's zoom out a little bit. See how her face is looking. Huh? She's she pretty. She's a pretty lady. All right. A mm, couple areas I want to just darken the shadows a little bit more. See you, the Bug King.
Patience, practice, perseverance. There is no such thing as motivation. There is only discipline. Just get good. There is motivation, just, you know. I think motivation is more your excitement to work on a specific project. Discipline is more like just your willingness to sit down and paint. Uh, man, I'm probably at 20,000 hours. I'm well past the 10,000 hour mark. I'm not going to say which paints I don't like. I use mostly Vallejo and Chimera. <clears throat> All right. How many weeks are 365 days a year? I didn't paint every single day, but some days I painted a whole lot more than others. Definitely more than eight hours. So we'll just say an average of eight hours a day. Man, I did 3,000 hours last year. Just last year. If you really want to get better, here's the secret. 
Don't just copy, analyze, right? Copying is fine. But you need to be thinking about why, what, the person you're copying or whatever was thinking as they were doing the things they were doing. You do that, and I promise you will get better. No, Dave, I'm taking this one. I'm not just sketching this one. I'm like trying to take my time on it a little bit. I can't get another one. 
This is a special gift. I gotta. I gotta take my time. Yeah, you guys say I paint fast, like you joke I paint fast, this is like the speed I paint a box art at. Everything's just a bit, bit more intentional. This is, I'm doing this for a reason, by the way. Who can tell me why? Why am I... taking my time more on this figure than what I normally would paint, how fast I would paint on stream? No, it has nothing to do with Monty. I can't enter at Monty. It has nothing to do with me and everything to do with you guys. Boom! All thigh. Got it! All thigh got it!
I mean, I can. She would probably be done in 40 hours. But the point I'm trying to show is that you guys can't... I'm trying to set a positive uh, example here and show you guys that you can't just rush through these things. Okay? If you want to paint for competition, you have to take your time. I feel like maybe in previous streams I set an unrealistic expectation. And if you want to paint to your maximum level, you have to be patient. Look, there's taking your time and there's noodling, okay? I see a lot of people that noodle on figures where they don't make any progress. They just paint the same parts over and over and over again. Often when I say I still paint to my maximum, pretty often. If I didn't give my clients my best work, well, I don't think they'd want to hire me. Oh, come on, zoom. There you go. Or focus, I mean.
And even this, this is like maybe 40% of the way done on her face. That's every single piece I paint like my absolute best figure? Yeah, no, of course not. Can't always top yourself. But I try and push certain things on every figure. How's she looking? Is there anything that's particularly bothering me? I think maybe the light on her nose is a little too much. I'm going to come in. Uh, I want a slightly more pinkish tone. Grab just a little bit of this transparent red. No, I would never. So some transparent red. Okay, so here's how we can start to introduce a little more nuance into the skin.
Hello, Russian Blue Art. How are you? All right, here we go. Chat had a fifty fifty. Take some of the brown, real thin. Not too much. We don't want her look like she's got crazy sideburns, but she does need to have, you know, some hair growing here.
Even if she's a lady. I like to put a couple hairs out of place. Just feels a little more natural to me. Makes her feel less like a doll. Some of these might be a little thick, so we can a little thick. Yeah, don't forget, as so long hair, right? As long hair. Your hair gradually falls out. You get these like little short strands that start to grow back, right? So those ones around your hairline uh, can't get pulled back into the bun or whatever, the braid or ponytail. So they kind of like ping, stick out a little bit.
Okay, gives the eyebrow a little texture. Also let some let's just reshape them a little bit. Where does the eyebrow go? Like right here, but it kind of starts to thin out as it gets towards the side of the eye. So we want to do this in less. Right? Yeah. Okay, the last thing I want to do is I want to tone this down just a touch. I don't want that extremely dark outline around the lip here. It's fine on the shadow side, but I don't want it on the, the side of the light. And I'll clean up that line. Bing, ba bing, ba bing, ba bing, ba boom. All right. I think I'm going to call it there for tonight. guys get a pretty good idea okay don't rush don't rush projects it takes time Yeah.